thing is what mo- the people neglect the most, and that's the spiritual. I'm right on that. Am I right? People neglect the spiritual more than anything. I want to turn your attention this morning to Joshua chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. Joshua chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. You know, I thank the Lord we got, as believers, we've got a promise of His presence. Amen? As believers, we got a promise of Him. Joshua chapter 1. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead now, therefore. Arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, even unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness in the Lebanon, in this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, and unto all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not, not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I will not fail you, nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shall you divide and inherit it, this land, the land which I swore unto the fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, uh, that you may prosper whatsoever you go. The book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do all according to that all that is written therein. For then shall you make your ways prosperous, and then shall you have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be this thou dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wheresoever you go. And I want to minister on that last verse right there. For the Lord your God is with you wheresoever you go. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, this morning, Lord, and we lift you up, dear God, and we exalt you, dear God, in here today. I ask for your anointing and your touch, dear Lord, uh, you to give me the words you would have me to speak, Lord. Uh, Father, we just ask you, God, for your blessings, dear God, uh, in this sanctuary, dear Lord. Uh, Lord, we give you the glory this morning, Lord, and the honor for it all. In that precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen and amen. I, I I don't know about you, but I think one of the greatest promise believers, both believers has, no matter where we go, no matter what we got, to, that we've got an ever-present help in the time of trouble. Anybody know what I'm talking about? No, no matter what we walk through, there's one thing that's remained the same, I, that he's right there with me. I, ain't you glad to know that this morning? I, it don't matter what your circumstance looks like. I, it don't matter what the situation is, I, and it don't matter what the, if it was a present or a past problem one thing we can tell that if God be for us uh, who can be against us this morning uh, you know what in this wicked world that we're living there's going to be times uh, we face trials uh, there's going to be times we face circumstances uh, there's going to be times we face battles and sickness uh, you know what the Bible says he tells us to be strong and courageous uh, why can we be strong and courageous in the midst uh, because the Lord thy God is with thee. Amen. How many know this morning uh, that if God be for us, uh, who or what can be against us? Uh, just as the Lord gave these words uh, to Joshua, I believe the Lord would have us to say here in Houston town uh, to be strong and courageous uh, for the Lord thy God is with us this morning. Uh, ain't you glad to know uh, that he's right there with you no matter what you're walking 
walking through, uh, no matter the battles, uh, no matter the situations, uh, guess what? We've got an ever-present help right there that when I call on his name, guess what? Uh, he's right there beside us. Uh, listen, no matter what we're going through, we got to be strong uh, and we got to be courageous. Uh, in verse 6 right there, he said, be strong uh, and good courage uh, for unto you this people shall you divide and an inheritance unto the land uh, which I swore unto the fathers uh, to give them. Uh, you see, Moses had just died and Joshua had given a commission. Uh, it was a big commission. Uh, he was going to lead Israel. Uh, and when you begin to lead people, you need the help of God. Amen? When you begin to be a leader, because listen, uh, along the way there's going to be battles. Uh, along the way there's going to be situations that arise. Uh, but listen, uh, we've got a helper this morning. Uh, we've got one that sticks closer than a brother. Uh, we've got one that's walking with us this morning. Uh, it was God had given them the promise uh, to give them that land uh, to the children of Israel. Uh, however, a promise is one thing, but possessing it is another. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? God give them the promise, but they had to be willing to put their foot out uh, and go out and possess uh, the land that God had said that he would give them. Uh, so in verse 3, we understand uh, the Lord said, every place uh, the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given to you as I said unto Moses. Uh, boy, what ain't that a problem? Ain't that a promise right there? Everywhere your foot treads, uh, he, he said he's given it to you. I got use for you, Houston town. I, I believe God has given us this community. Amen? I believe God has given us this road. I, I believe God has given us this county. But are we going to put our foot out to, to step down? Amen? Are we going to spit our foot out? You see, God had given them a promise. But in order to possess that promise, they had to do their part. They had to go start walking. Amen? They had to put their foot down everywhere their foot stood. God said, I'm going to give you that land. Uh, listen, too many people don't want to possess the promises of God. Amen? Too many people don't want to go after the promises of God. Uh, too many people don't, uh, don't want to go after what God's telling them. I, I hear all the time, I've heard them say, uh, sometimes if it's the will of God, well, it's going to come to pass. No, wait just a minute. Uh, if it's the will of God, uh, listen, if they wouldn't have never set their foot out, they would have never possessed the land. It's one thing to have a promise, but it's another thing to possess. Did you hear me? It's another one thing to know what that book says, and it's another thing to possess what that book says. I believe there's things in that book that he has promised some of you this morning, but many people have not possessed the promise. Amen? How many possessed their healing? How many possessed their breakthrough? God gave you a promise of it, didn't he? But how many go after it? How many's gone after it? To go after and accept the promises that what God has given them this morning. But let me tell you something. Yes, they had a promise. And yes, God told them to possess. But I can promise you one thing. This certainly meant war was on the horizon. This certainly meant that the enemy was not going to step in the way and try to stop the hand of God from working. Amen. And to be certain, he will contest every advance in every foot of the way. That enemy don't want you to possess what God has got in store for you. That enemy don't want you to possess what God has got in store. Amen. He don't want you to live according to the word of God. He don't want you to have your children. He don't want you to have your family. Let me tell you, when you go to possess that promise, can I tell you right now, you're going to find yourself in a battle. Amen. Every time I found myself in the will of God in order to get to where I need to be, I've always had to fight a battle. Amen. I've always had to go through a battle. But there's one thing I can tell you. When I'm in the battle, guess who's with me? I don't have to fear. I don't have to worry. 
because the one that's walking with me has got this battle. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And then he say, God's got this battle this morning. God's got that battle this morning. I said, God's got that battle this morning. Some of you are sitting to worry and trying to fight it yourself. Uh-uh. You just walk and do what God's told you, and he'll take care of the rest. Let me tell you, that old devil may look like he's big and bad, but I'm telling you right now, he may be that big bully on the block, but I'm calling for my heavenly father. And when he sees my heavenly father, he's going to tremble. Amen? When he sees Christ, he's going to tremble this morning. How many know this morning? Yes, there's a battle, but God's got this battle if you'll depend on him this morning. God's got it. Amen? We're going to stand our ground. We're going to tread our feet. Can I tell you? The wicked in this world has not won. What are you saying? Yeah, I see them going up there. Some of the vile things that's going on. Their antichrist agenda and things going on, but they've not won. Did you hear me? They've not won. They're not going to win. The wages of sin is not going to win. Did you hear me? The drug lords are not going to win. Amen? They're not going to win. The ungodly is not going to win. The Islamists is not going to win. The false religions ain't going to win. How do you know they're going to win? I read the back of the book. You see, I started, <laughs> I looked at the back <laughs> And it said, and it showed us what happens at the end. Amen? It said he's going to rule and reign. Amen? Ain't that you glad to know that this morning? But let me tell you, if he's not going to win there, he ain't going to win in your life this morning. That enemy ain't going to win. Why? Because the same God that wipes it out at the end is the same God that's walking beside of me this morning. Amen? You see, that's what God told Joshua. He said, you don't have to fear those that you come against. Yes, there's going to be battles. Yes, there's going to be things that come your way along the wayside. There's going to be, as long as you seek my face, guess what? There ain't no one that can touch you. Amen? How many know that this morning? Believers, as long as you seek the face of God, you're going to be all right. Amen? You don't have to cower in fear. Too many people's worried about what the devil's going to do to them. I want to remind the devil what Christ is going to do to him and already done to him. Amen? Too many people worried about how everything's going on. And I said, I got God with me. I got Christ with me. Why should I have to fear? Amen? I ain't saying be cautious, but I'm telling you, we better understand something. That my hand, that my future don't resist in the hand of a man. It, resist, it rests in the hand of who? The Almighty. That is if I'm a believer this morning. You see, but I'm telling you, there's going to be that devil ain't going to give a stronghold. If we're going to win this county and this community, guess what? There's a battle to be won. Amen? If you're going to win your household, there's a battle to be won. Amen? There's battles that's going, on, that's going to wage because I can guarantee you every bit of the way that you're trying to go, he's going to be like one of these big defensive tackles that's going to try to stop you. Amen? He's going to stand in the way. But I got news for you. We don't back down. Amen? We don't back down from a giant. He may have a spear and a sword, but we got something more powerful, don't we? We got the name of who? The Lord. Amen? But too many people are, want to be defeated. And I got news for you this morning. God don't want you defeated this morning. Amen? God don't want you to victim this morning. He wants you to victor this morning. You don't have to be defeated this morning. You can be victorious. If God be for you, once again, who or what can be against you? Amen? But too many walking around scared. Not everybody. But I think sometimes we all start looking how big what's in front of us. Not just one of us. I think we've all, if you've never been there before, I want to congratulate you. We see what's facing before us. And we start looking what's facing before us. And who's beside of us. And who's above us. And who's bigger than that. 
Sometimes we forget that God's with us. Sometimes we forget that we can be strong and courageous in the midst of it all, in the midst of the battle. Because God's right there with us. Oh, what a promise that we got this morning. And what an assurance that we got today. Let me tell you, you're going to have to fight for every foot of spiritual ground that you take this morning. Did you hear me? There's going to be the fight there. And let me tell you, the enemy does not give ground easily. He's going to stand in the way. But I got news for you, saints of God. We got victory this morning. Amen? We got victory because of the blood of Christ. We got victory because of the work of Christ. We got victory because we're a child of Christ. We got victory this morning. Did you hear me? He may get in the way, but he can't stop us this morning. Did you hear me? He may try to hinder, but he can't stop us. We've got to say, I got my mind made up I'm going to continue on. But people forget that God's with them. See, this battle this morning, maybe God has promised you something. Maybe he's promised this battle many times is over your own family. Satan's got a hold of them, no man. Satan's got strongholds in these areas over our community. Maybe it's our health, whatever it is. God's promised. Let me tell you, You put your foot out and say, I'm accepting that promise. I'm accepting the promise of God. I'm not backing down. I'm not getting discouraged. Yeah, there's going to be naysayers along the way. Did you hear me? Anybody ever heard of a naysayer? Won't you just give up? I don't even want to hear that kind of talk. If I listen to the naysayers, some of them said you wouldn't last five minutes. Guess what? (laughs) Guess what? I've been preaching over how many? What year? Seventeen years now. I got saved in '99, and I started preaching in 2000. And guess what? I'm still standing right now. But the naysayers would have said, "You're going under." The naysayers, I tell you, there's no hope. The naysayers, I tell you, forget about it, give up. The naysayers, I tell you. You ain't going to be victorious. This thing's bigger than you. I ain't listening to the naysayers. I'm listening to the voice of the one who says, I'm a conqueror. I'm listening to the one who says, it ain't over. I'm listening to the one that says, he's going to give you victory this morning. You see, too many people want to listen to those uh, that want to give them the bad report. I've come by to give you the good report this morning. I've come by to give you the report of God. I've come by to tell you everything's going to be all right. I've come by to tell you that if you hang on to him, he's going to bring you through. I've come by to tell you he's able to heal your body this morning. I've come by to tell you he's able to bring those lost children in this morning. I've come by to tell you he's able to make a way when there seems to be no way. You say, I got a giant in front of me this morning. I got news for you. He's still able to slay the giant. Amen? He's still able to bring the giant down. You say, I'm in a lion's den this morning. Well, guess what? He's still able to shut the mouth of the lion's den up. But the lion's up. You see what I'm saying? When God's for you, you can be all right. Don't listen to those naysayers. There'll be some type because you just got a handful, close the doors and go on. Uh-uh. Yeah, I want to see this church packed out. Anybody else with me? I'm going to hang on that it's going to be packed out. I'm going to hang on. You're going to get those 100 people because there's nothing better I'd like to do than be on the roof. For those who don't know, if they get 100 people in here, I'm getting on the roof singing and preaching one Sunday. That's their motivation. And I don't like being on roofs that good. But in this case, if you can do it, I'm going to do it. I'll be more than glad to. So, when are you getting that preacher? I'm saying, just because you ain't got it yet, don't mean you ain't going to get it. You keep striving for it. You be a good courage. You be strong. If God for you, he's going to do it. Amen? Don't give up. There's a battle out there waging There's a war that is raging. 
And I'm telling you, it ain't a time to give up. It's a time to pick our swords up and start fighting. I believe what we're seeing in this country right now, you bark my words, I w believe we're seeing the rise between good and evil more than anything right now. But those that want to kill the innocent unborn child and those who stand for life and you see the vileness and the ungodliness that's going along, I, see we're be I believe we're beginning to see a rise of the battle of good and evil like we never had before. And we're not backing down. The church of God's not going to back down. We need to stand strong and we need to keep back and get marching. We got a real devil to deal with out there. We need to tell the devil we ain't backing down. We need to tell this world we ain't backing down. This preacher ain't shutting his mouth. He's going to keep it open a little bit longer until that trumpet blows. Why? Because we're in a war. We're in a battle for the soul of mankind. We don't have to fear these things because God's with us this morning. People don't realize how much God's with us. I don't back down. No, we don't back it. You know what I believe means that? If the church of Jesus Christ, and I'm talking that cross of barriers, I'm talking about the blood of Jesus Christ, would unite and stand up, I believe a revival could break loose. Amen. See, here's the thing. We're fighting a real enemy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and it. Powers of darkness. That devil's not going to give ground easy. That means we got a battle. But we don't be scared in the battle. We go in there walking. Hit it last Sunday a little bit. I'll probably hit a little bit tonight when I talk about standing on the word. We don't have to be afraid. I walk like Barney Five with authority, saying God's with me. Did you hear me? When I know God's with me, I know everything's going to be all right. When I know God's with me, I know he's got this battle. Amen. This battle's not mine, but this battle's the Lord. Amen. This battle's God's. This war's God's. We, yeah, we're in a, the war's won, by the way. Let me just state, state that 100%. The war has been won. It was won at Calvary. The battle's going to be about over, amen? It's coming to a screeching halt one of these days. But we don't have to be scared. We don't have to be afraid. Why? Because God's with us this morning. Amen? We don't have to be like an ostrich with our head in the ground running around in circles. Huh? We can be warriors in Christ. Amen? That's what God was telling Joshua. You stand your ground. I'm with you. And if God, if I'm with you, there ain't nothing or no one that's going to touch you as long as I am with you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I can't remember who it was. The preacher was talking about. Somebody was wanting to shoot him one time. It may have been Hagee. He was praying or something. I can't remember the story, but anyway, it didn't work. You see, when God's with you, I've always said they may want to shoot you, but he can make that bullet come out the back chamber. Amen. You see, that's the thing. We got to be strong and we got to be courageous. No matter what they put our way, if God's with us, he can work around it. Amen. They tried to put Peter in an iron gate, but guess what? The iron gate couldn't stop the angel of the Lord. Amen. We, got, we can be courageous that God is with us this morning, that God is fighting this battle for his saints this morning. You know, Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 1 and 18, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, the according to the prophecies, prophecies which went before thee, that thou might be, thou might worst a good warfare. The point I'm trying to make, we are fighting. We are in a warfare. We are in a battle. We are in a final stages. I believe with all my heart, I believe in almost seven, this is, yeah, this is 17. Uh, 17 years of preaching, I have preached the coming of the Lord, but never before have I believed it more like I have right now. Anybody else with me? I thought it'd come years ago, but I can honestly say it ain't discouraged. You know, I wished he would have. But listen, I see the battle increasing. And I see things happening right now. Ten years ago when I preached it, 
that had to be lined up, but now it is lined up. And I'm telling you, we're in a warfare. And we better stay strong. And we better stay courageous. We better not give him an inch. Amen? We better stay fighting. This thing's coming to a screeching halt quickly. People don't realize how quickly it is. Instead of getting slack, it's time to get on fire. Amen? It's time to get burning. It's time to pick our swords up. It's time to get on our knees. Let me tell you, it's time to go to war. Amen? Don't worry about the enemy because God's with you this morning if you're his. But too many don't want to. They're worried about everything else. They don't want to fight. They don't want to fight conflict. But I'm telling you, if you fight this battle, this spiritual battle, you're in constant conflict. Amen? This preacher knows what it's like. This preacher battles. But I found out if I go to war too, that enemy's going to take long. He's going to be fleeing. How do I go to war? I get on my knees. Amen? I go to battle. I go open this word. And I realize that God has got me where he wants me. Amen? I realize God is with me. I realize God has placed me. I realize God has called me. I realize God has not failed me. I realize he ain't forsaken me. I'm telling you, you go to battle in this thing. You start doing something for God, you're going to have a battle. Anybody believe that this morning? You start getting on fire for him, you're going to have a battle this morning. He ain't going to bother those that he's already got. I tell people, don't worry. I wouldn't worry if he's fighting. I'd be more worried when he's not fighting. Amen? Because if he ain't fighting, you're doing something wrong. I believe that. He's going to bother those that trouble him. Well, this old boy right here has already said, I'm either going to give you a black eye, I'm going to cause a ruckus for you. I want to give the devil the biggest headache he's ever had. Anybody else with me? At the point I'm trying to make, too many people want to faint. Too many people want to give up. Too many people want to wave the white flag. God ain't telling you to wave the white flag. He's telling you to put a sword in your hand and charge this morning. He's telling you to stand strong. He's telling you to be courageous. He said he ain't didn't bring you this far to just let you die in battle now. He brought you this far not for just a partial victory, amen? He brought you this far for a full-scale victory. Anybody believe that this morning? Y'all quiet, homie. Time for jumping jacks. No, but too many are so, they faint. And I know sometimes... The battle can be long. That's the reason we got to stay charged up. That's the reason it's so important to stay on our knees before God and stay in the Word and stay in the house of God. Amen? We need to have that assurance. But rest assured, too, this morning, when you're in this battle, if you're His child, you're not fighting this battle alone. God's with you. Amen? God's with you. Anybody got that assurance? How many know God's with you? How many know this morning that God's with you no matter what you're going through? God's with you. And if God's with you, I don't care how big the giant is, he's still not bigger than God. I don't care how big the storm is, he's still not bigger. That storm's still not greater than God. Amen? We must not forget who's on board with us. The problem is we don't call him to deck. Amen? Too many people don't want to call him up. He's right there. I believe sometimes he's just waiting for asking, waiting on us to say, get in the way. Here you go, Lord. You get in front of us. I need your help. Guess what? When you ask him, he's going to intervene. Amen? Too many people don't want to ask. Too many people want to do it their way. And God said, do it my way. And let me tell you, I'll give you victory. I'll give you amazing victory. Anybody ever seen God give them an amazing victory before? Anybody ever seen God touch them before? Anybody ever seen God do the mood of miraculous before? 
Anybody ever seen when it seems to be no way when you're surrounded by enemies that God would somehow just wipe those enemies out? That's the God that I serve this morning. That's the Lord God Jehovah this morning. We've got to be willing to let him get in the way. Yes, he's right there. But we got to say, Lord, you take charge. Lord, you fight this battle. I'm standing on you this morning. You're with me. Here you go. I'm calling on you right now. No matter what we walk through, the one thing I know is that he's with me. What are you getting at, preacher? I think about Psalms 23. It tells us where he walks with us. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Amen. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of, of, of my life, and I will dwell in thy house, house of the Lord, forever. You see, the psalmist David said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I have nothing to fear. Why? Because he's with me. Did you hear me? He's the shit. You see, a church, I'm just an under-shepherd here. He's the head shepherd. You see, I can't walk with you everywhere you go. Anybody know that? But the head shepherd can. See, I can't walk with you going into eternity. But the head shepherd can. He said, you don't have nothing to fear. He said, I don't have to fear going through the valley of the shadow of death. Why? Because he's with me. What are you getting at? In times of danger, difficulty, or even death, we don't have to fear no evil. For why? Thou are with me. We can be strong. We can be courageous. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Let me tell you, I remember down in North Carolina, precious man of God, they had this minister come to the church down there. Me and him went fishing some. I remember he, he had cancer. I would get him out taking fishing a little bit when he was able. I remember on his, out there at his house that day, he passed away. Before, what he was, I remember him doing. Not much. It, it, not, you know, when, you, when you're on that point, you're weak. But he had enough to just put his hands up and still pray, sing praises. Why? Because I believe God was with him. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You see, the Bible tells us in incidences throughout the Word of God that he was with his people. A few weeks ago, I preached on Joseph on a Wednesday night. God, but God was with him in the pit. He was with him in the prison. And he was with him in the palace. He was with the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace. Anybody remember that story? Anybody remember how they thought they threw three men in there? And Nebuchadnezzar said, I threw, I threw three men in there, but I see a fourth man walking. And he's like the Son of God. Who do I believe that was? I believe it was the pre-incarnate Christ. I, the Word made flesh walking right there, in, right there in the midst. He had his hand around Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the fire knew that it couldn't touch them. Amen. I think about Daniel in the lion's den. I've never been in a lion's den, but I have been in a bear's den before. You can ask Baba. Me and Amos was down in Cage Cove. If you don't know where Cage Cove out, it's in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park, and there's bears all over the place. We was down there. I got it, my bright idea. I'm going to get as close to this thing as I can. <laughs> I said, they ain't going to bother me. Me and Amos got out of the car. <laughs> we got close. Probably a little closer than I expected to get to him. He walked around me. Probably from right here to right there didn't bother us. 
It was a cu- at least there weren't no cubs around. He wasn't hungry. <laughs> I probably, if I wanted to, I probably could have reached out and touched him, but I knew then I'd have probably invoked him. But then you had somebody that had a flash photography, thought they could get the bear's face. And I thought, oh, Lord, this is asking for trouble right here when I seen it. And when it did, I seen his paw like this right there. <laughs> if he wanted to swipe us, he probably could. <laughs> I took a, I said, hey, let's get out of here. He stood still and I was running. <laughs> but the point is, what I'm trying to make is I've never been in the lion's den. I imagine those lions were hungry that day. But God closed their mouth and closed their stomachs up, waiting on the, he said, I know what God was doing. He said, I'm waiting on the enemies of Daniel. I'll open it back up when I get them in there. He said, as long as my servant's in there, I got my hand on him. I'm with him. And those lines, I believe, knew who he was. When he spoke, they had to obey. They wouldn't open their mouth. They couldn't want to eat. Anybody know you get in the midst of a hungry lion's den, you're going to get. That had to be God. The point is, God's with you. You say, even I, even in the New Testament, I see incidents where God was with Stephen. Amen. Even being stoned. Rocks hurt. Anybody ever been in a rock fight before? We used to play rock fights for growing up too. Or we'd stick them in snowballs. I'm, putting, I'm telling on myself a little bit here. Do you want to? But they hurt. But you, can you imagine these big rocks they were stoning him with? He was sitting there. It didn't feel good to be hit with a rock. And let me tell you, he was there praying for him. He said, Lord, there ain't no charge to him. But guess who he was seeing? Right there at the right hand of the Father. He said, I see Christ sitting at the right hand. That showed me Christ was showing, revealing himself. Christ was right there with him. What are you getting at? They had no reason to fear. Nothing. Because God was with them. Did you hear what I'm saying? Can I tell you, saints of God, we've got that same promise today. Amen. Anybody believe we got that same promise today? Anybody believe we serve the same God this morning? Anybody believe he's able? If we, listen, I don't fear Islam this morning. I don't fear ISIS this morning because I know one that can send one angel to wipe out 185,000 men. So if he did it then, he can do it today. Amen. God's faithful. We don't fear. We know God's with us this morning. We can be strong. We can be courageous this morning. No doubt the Lord was with us. When the Lord's with you, you can possess these promises. But you've got to be obedient to God also in the same token. You've got to seek his direction. And more importantly, you've got to follow his direction. Amen? As long as Joshua sought God... Israel would remain untouchable. But the very moment Joshua did not seek God, this is a whole message in itself, the very time that he did not seek God, guess what happened? They suffered a defeat where they shouldn't have suffered a defeat at. A little place called Aya. Right there. What are you saying? I'm saying we need God's help no matter how big or how small that it is. What are you saying? I need God's help in everything. I believe even something as simple as breathing. We need the help of God. Amen? Walking. I need the help of God. One part of my body goes, guess what? I need his help. Amen? Sometimes we fail to seek God for directions, things we try to put it in our own hands, and that's when we get messed up. Just like Joshua, because he failed to seek God. It was supposed to be a small battle. He just presumed Ai would be delivered into his hands. And guess what? They were sent into camp. And when they were sent into camp, that meant defeat for the rest of the camp. Anybody believe that this morning? So what are you saying? I'm saying right now. You see, if God, Joshua would have sought God, God would have revealed it to him. But he didn't. And that's the reason they suffered defeat. I don't know about you, but I still need the help of God. Anybody else with me this morning? 
I need God's blessings. I need God's assurance. I need to know that we can, but I can promise you this. If you're bought with the blood of Christ this morning, he's going to take care of us. If you've got the blood of Jesus Christ on you, he is with you this morning. When the Lord is with thee, rest assured, he is for you this morning. When the Lord is with you, he's going to fight the battle. When the Lord is with you, guess what? He's going to be right there with you. He not, may not bring you out, but he'll walk you right through it this morning. Ain't you glad you know that Jesus Christ is right there with us? Ain't you glad to know that you've got an ever-present help in the time of trouble? Ain't you glad to know that you can call on the name of the Lord? Ain't you glad to know when you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, he is with you? Ain't you glad to know when you're in that battle, he's with you? No matter how big or small that battle is, he's with you. Don't you, ain't you glad to know when you get bad news, he's with you? Ain't you glad to know when you have good news, he's with you? Ain't you glad to know that he's with you at all times? Amen? How many is glad to know that this morning? I, I'm telling you today, we can rest ashore. We can be strong and we can be vi victorious. We don't have to coward. We don't have to fear. Because why? For the Lord thy God is with us this morning. Think about that once again. These in the Bible face persecution. They battle trials, etc. But there's one thing I'm going to tell you. But God. Amen? But God. But God. How many can say that about their life this morning? But God. The reason I'm here. But God. The reason I'm not in hell this morning. But God. The reason I'm not in, in the hospital. But God. The reason I'm breathing, but God. We need to keep, keep in track of it. And understand that the Lord is with thee. He is with his people. No, you say, have you seen him? No, I've never seen him. But I've sure failed him. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I've never seen him, but I failed him. And I've seen what he can do in a life. He's with me. If you're his child, he's with you this morning. Rest assured, victory is yours. If God fighting for you, I don't care how many armies are in the world against you. If God's fighting for you, you've won. Anybody believe that? If God's fighting for you, you've won. How many believe that this morning? Everyone standing in here this morning. Maybe you need to get encouraged. Maybe you need to be lifted up this morning. Maybe you need to Wonder where he's at. He's right there. The reason that you're standing. Maybe you did God. You're fighting this battle. And you feel down. You feel drained a little bit. God said, come up here. Fall on your face before me. Who would be the first that step out and said, I need the help of God? I'm drained. Maybe I'm fighting a battle. Maybe I just need to be encouraged. God's got this. He's with you. He's facing the battle. He's facing the battle. He's facing that battle. Put him in the midst of it. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let it be done. Amen and amen.